Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for an MIT Advanced Management Program AMP info session. We'll call it AMP throughout the hour. So when we say AMP, we mean the Advanced Management Program at MIT. And I'm joined here today, MIT senior lecturers, Court Chilton and Elizabeth Johnson will review the program's format that they teach, answer your questions in real time, and provide information to help you plan your development goals for the upcoming year, which includes AMP. Molly Schneider is also here as faculty um, to help us help guide us through the program. She's the master of the program. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and we'll address them as we go. Without further ado, I'll pass things over to Court to get us started. Uh, thanks, Courtney. Um, welcome to all of you. Nice that you can join us. I'll just do a quick introduction. Um, I'm the faculty director for the program. I've been doing it for about 10 years. Uh, it's always interesting to do, and um, I'm lucky to have uh, a couple of other people who help me deliver it. It's a lot of moving parts and pieces, uh, and the first person I want to introduce you to is Molly Schneider, who runs everything about the business, the logistics, the organization that enables uh, the group to come together. She also worked with me on the design of the program. And then my other colleague on the call today is Dr. Elspeth Johnson, who is in London right now. And she is one of the key faculty uh, in the program, and she helps teach strategy, culture, and the connection to uh, to leadership. So uh, we can we hope that the three of us can answer almost all of your questions or address some of your comments. Um, and um, with that, what I'm going to do is um, show you where this thing happens, and that's uh, the one of the first buildings uh, at MIT. Um, and we'll be, we don't actually do the program inside that building. We're about a quarter of a mile or a, I don't know, a third of a kilometer away from this building, but we'll be on campus. And this is what campus will look like uh, in June. And uh, so I just want to give you a flavor. This is a, this is an in-person program. We do some things online before and after, but it's primarily an in-person program on the MIT campus. Everybody should know that. And it's five weeks back to back to back in June. So it's a serious commitment of time. And uh, we do our best to be in the classroom and be add value there, but also to get you out into this uh, environment as well. Let me show you what we're gonna talk about today. And, um, and then we'll, uh, and I'll talk for a little bit, and then we wanna maybe respond to any early questions or comments. So I'll pause as we go here, just to make sure that uh, you feel like this is your meeting a bit and uh, that you get to learn what you wanna learn. So I'll orient a bit to what MIT is all about and what the goals of the Advanced Management Program uh, are. This is the longest program we do at uh, the business school here at MIT, the Sloan School. Uh, and then I plan to answer any questions you have about how to apply or who comes, things like that. Um, and uh, that we'll uh, get into in some detail. We can also get into detail about the content of the program, what we do around the edges of the program, what people typically take away, and then any next steps about how to engage, whether to engage, um, we'll do that uh, as well, okay? So let me just, uh, again, I'm gonna be one way a little bit, and then we'll, I'm seeing some comments, that's great, keep it coming. If you have some early questions, you can put them in at any time in the comments uh, section. So uh, just a little bit about MIT. Um, the, uh, we began as an engineering school, and in 1861, you can see our mission there at the top was to advance knowledge and educate in science, technology, and other areas of scholarship. Guess what? Management is what's considered at that time another area of scholarship. This is the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. They weren't thinking about management when MIT was founded. However, they were founded as an engineering school, and we take that approach to doing uh, what we do in the uh, advanced management program. So you can see our motto over there on the left, mind and hand. If you need it in Latin, it's there too. Uh, but basically, and we take an engineering approach to management uh, education, which is it's important to know things, to have knowledge, but then to immediately try to apply it and figure out if and how it might work in your own situation. So that's one of the little differentiators about our advanced management program is it's so applied and it tends to attract people who get a little bit impatient with uh, only hearing theory, uh, who get impatient with the general tendency in academia to love theory and research. 
and who aren't as strong on the applied side. We think we're we're all about uh, helping you with knowledge that's research based, but applying it is what we really care about because we want to address, as it says here on the slide, uh, the world's greatest challenges. And so we want to make a difference in the world. And we think that happens because people are trying things uh, and trying to intervene in systems and companies, uh, markets, uh, and that's uh, drives everything we do uh, here. Um, the so within the overall purpose of MIT and the Sloan School, um, the goal of the Advanced Management Program is, as it says here, to provide an intimate, transformative learning experience for people who are well along in their career. Uh, the average age is somewhere in the 40s uh, for people applying to the AMP. People who have dealt with complexity, uh, who've dealt with variability, uh, volatility, uh, and have experience doing that is who this program is designed for. So you, I'm not going to read slides to you so much, but what we want to do typically is several things simultaneously, which is we want you to, to give you skills and research based frameworks that are useful for people who are pretty senior in the organization, either in the C-suite or just be below the C-suite of their organizations. Uh, I'll say more about uh, the kinds of people that that applies to. Uh, we want to connect you to each other. Uh, so we, we want to deliver a cohort experience and help you connect with previous cohorts of the Advanced Management Program. And then we also want to get you out into the ecosystem all around MIT. It is a beautiful campus, as I noticed some of you uh, mentioned in the comments section. But there's also just an amazing amount. Of, really, it's a vibrant community of startups and big companies and lots of innovation happening. And it's important that we get you out into that as well. So that's what we're trying to do is work on skills, but also uh, connect you to each other. So there's some emotional goals. Uh, there's some psychological goals, as well as sort of skill building goals that are part of this experience. Um, a little bit more about um, who we look for. Uh, I started to touch up on that in terms of the average age, but people typically have 15 to 20 years of work experience and they have had to have worked across different functional or business lines. They have had to look outside their function in order to be effective. You need to speak great English because that's what, how we deliver the program. Uh, if you've had significant international exposure, that's a benefit. Uh, it's a very international group. I'll show you a slide about that in a second. Uh, this program in particular tends to attract people from all over the world. Uh, and we're looking for people who really are relationship oriented, who want to contribute to the learning of others, who, who aren't just here to get the uh, MIT stamp on their forehead or a piece of paper, uh, but who are really interested in learning and developing themselves. Uh, so people who come here, they're very different, but what they have in common is they want to work on themselves as leaders. They want to share with others what they can about how to address complexity, how to implement strategy, things like that. Uh, one more slide, and then I'm going to pause, and we'll see if there's any questions or if I should keep, uh, keep going. Um, so it's probably hard to see this. So let me just summarize. If you could really see, uh, zoom in on this, what you'll see is that over here in the pie chart are lots of different countries and locations. And uh, this is a relatively recent cohort, uh, but usually there's over 15 to 20 countries present in the room. And very, it surprises some people, but not that many people come from North America. There are always a few, um, but if we have a cohort of let's say 35, 40 people, maybe five or six would come from North America. Everyone else is from somewhere outside of uh, North America. So it's a really interesting, rich and diverse group. What these other bar charts are showing you is they come from different economic sectors, uh, lots, you know, a little bit more of a tilt towards uh, engineering and finance oriented uh, industries. Our shorthand for this is science, technology, engineering, manufacturing, finance. We tend to draw from high tech sectors, but we get plenty of people too who, uh, who come from what have traditionally been thought of as low tech sectors. Uh, but you know, consumer packaged goods shows up here, travel and tourism shows up here. Um, everybody's becoming a tech company these days. So that's part of the appeal of coming to 
the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, the bottom chart just shows what functions people are from, and most are from general management kinds of jobs, but a few come from specialized jobs. They're head of R&D, they're head of finance, they're head of marketing or operations, and we get a really diverse cross-section there uh, as well. So uh, the point is it's really diverse, and what everyone has in common is they want to work on a company issue uh, that's not something that can be solved right away, but that will take time. Uh, and they want to work on themselves as leaders so that the way they show up in the future is a fit with where their company needs to go. Let's see. Oh, that's more about content. So let me just pause here about who comes and see if we've had any questions or thoughts about that. And let me just say again, welcome, and we'd love to hear from you. Um, Court, I see a great question in um, the chat about who this is for. Um, the type of people that come to AMP. So someone asked, is this program designed for business owners? If you own the business yourself, um, and maybe we could talk a little bit about that if we have time and, you know, yeah. what kind of people come to AMP and what they bring. Yeah. So um, let me start with this. And then Molly and Elspeth, if you feel free to come in. I'll, I'll stop in just a moment. Um, the You do not have to be a business owner to come. You can be one, but you don't have to be. Uh, so we tend to draw people from the entrepreneurial world who might have been a founder or a co-founder. Maybe they're in the executive suite of an entrepreneurial, maybe a venture-backed startup company. We tend to get a lot of people from that world. But we also get people from large corporations who are running big geographies, big functions, or maybe they have a job that's cross-funding, uh, cross-cutting like they're in charge of quality for their organization or in charge of innovation. They're in charge of an initiative that touches pretty much everybody's uh, work life. So that's who tends to be in the room. One other thing, and then uh, Elspeth and Molly, uh, feel free to come in and add. It's not only commercial enterprises. So we get quite a few people who come who have big jobs inside of government. Uh, who might be in charge of trade for Thailand or innovation for Singapore or something like that. So government people come as well. And then sometimes we get people from large nonprofits. A few times we've had uh, people who are senior administratively for big research institutions, like the head, head of nuclear medicine for Australia has come. Uh, the head of an engineering, another engineering university has come to be a part of this. People with big administrative jobs are also part of the audience here. Elspeth and Molly, what, what didn't I say that I should have said? I guess the only thing I'd add to that court is, I, I think it's got much less to do with the structure of the organization or indeed the ownership of the organization and much more about the level of experience an individual has and also about whether they are, um, they're really trying to crack a hard problem. Yeah. A problem that might need some frameworks applied to it, some lenses, um, some a, a, a new, different, innovative network, which you'll definitely get both from the people sitting next to you in the classroom, but also the whole of the MIT campus that we'll expose you to. Um, so I think it's much more about the problem rather than the, the ownership or organizational structure. Yeah. The, I'm seeing some questions like I've only been working for five years. Can I come? And I, we would say we don't have any hard and fast rules, but it's unlikely that someone with only five years work experience could contribute enough to the learning of others to add value. Although we've had we've had some people that are younger than 40. I saw another question about I'm only I'm in my 30s. Can I come? The answer is maybe uh, you should maybe talk with Molly with this. Uh, we, if you need to consult with somebody, maybe we can post that, uh, Molly. Uh, you can reach out to Molly and, and just explore the possibilities. Maybe you're on the edge yeah. and it would be a good fit. Um, so we, again, we don't have any hard and fast rules, but we know that the cohort experience works when people have roughly similar amounts of experience, similar kinds of problems to the ones that Elspeth was mentioning just a moment ago, a hard challenge. Uh, and we need people who've had some experience trying to deal with that already. Yeah. So that's why we say what we say about that. Yeah. You don't and I think need just, a to, just to build on that court, remember when you're a member of the advanced management program cohort, 
you we think you'll learn from professors like me and course and other people of course but you'll also learn from each other and so as you think about applying think also about what experiences you have to share with your fellow ampers because that is a critical part of the, the whole experience but yeah reach out to molly if you have any questions um don't screen yourself out um allow us to help you work out whether this is the right program for you yeah there could be something else that would be just as good if we if we think it's not quite a fit that we could adv advise you elsewhere i'm seeing some questions here too about sponsorship um you should know that um the people who come some of them are sponsored by their companies either wholly or in part, and by that I mean the participant pays something themselves, but the company also pays. So there's all kinds of different models. You don't have to be sponsored, although some people are. Uh, many people fund the whole thing uh, themselves. Um, and um, the some of you that are asking about the price, you can see that on the website um, and the, more about the course there. Why don't we just post that now if we can, uh, Courtney. The, uh, where you can go to learn more about the fees, et cetera. Um, and then again, Molly and I are uh, happy to respond to uh, individual queries about that. I'm seeing someone uh, say, when you say five weeks, are they back to back? And yes, they are. So you pretty much have to commit to being here and away from your job for a bit. So that's why, you know, a really frank and candid conversation with your manager about whether or not you have the backup in place to be here. Um, the really important point that I want to get across about the five weeks back to back is that if you think you can do your job and do this at the same time, yeah. you cannot. Uh, <laughs> you'll take down the quality of the cohort experience and you won't be doing your job as well. So you need to have a frank conversation with your manager about being fully present here, fully emotionally here with us. That's how people get full value out of that. Yeah. Could not agree more. I think we've also Molly. had a couple questions about um, whether there's an examination process, if there's a certification given, and I think I can tick a couple of those boxes. Uh, right. We don't test you. Um, there's not an exam you have to pass. For us, what successful completion of the program looks like is being physically and mentally present with us through the five weeks. Um, so you may have assignments while you're here on campus, but we're not grading them to determine if you've successfully completed it. Um, we're just making sure that people are with us and participating. Um, in terms of a certification, if you successfully complete the program, you will earn your advanced certificate for executives. Um, we have more information about that on our website, uh, but it is uh, it comes with a, a number of benefits, including Sloan affiliate alumni status and discounts on our future courses. Um, but that is the cert certification. You, you, you receive a dual certification for having completed the advanced management program, but also an advanced certificate for executives. Yeah. I see another question in here, and I'll just go to to it. Courtney, feel free to uh, to uh, stop me from doing this too much if you if you think I'm going off uh, into uh, someplace where it's just too much uh, too much detail. No, um, never. Someone, never too someone asked, um, "Do I actually need to have a business problem to work on?" That's ideal, but we also, I should say, we get. Uh, people who are qualified to come, who pay the uh, the uh, tuition, and who come for their personal development. They're looking for the next thing. Here are a couple of examples of what I'm talking about. We did have someone in the room. Uh, we have someone in the room almost every year who's like what I'm about to say, who's an entrepreneur who might have just closed their business or sold their business, and they just want to come and refresh. They just want to renew themselves. They've been so locked into doing what they're doing, and now they're looking for the next thing. And that's the problem they're really uh, working on. And so they're working on themselves primarily, but they, in the background, they're looking at the next businesses that might be good for them to start or become associated with or partner with. And so that's perfectly legitimate um, as well. But the more typical uh, thing to come with is I've got this real problem. It's it's uh, it's one that needs to be addressed short term and long term. Uh, it's complex. Um, we don't seem to be making as much progress on it as we'd like. People who come with those kinds of problems and are willing to be open about it and exchange views with other folks and get into it with the faculty as well, they get huge value out of the AMP. 
we were just, uh, Elspeth and Molly and I were just on a call with this year's cohort. And it's amazing what people have been able to do post uh, program. Yeah, and I, I would just add to that and to, just to try and emphasize this. Um, rather than you thinking, oh, maybe I don't qualify or maybe I won't apply, uh, on the side of emailing Molly, talking about what it looks like to apply, because we are always looking to put together the most interesting cohort. And the, the most interesting cohort will always have a few outliers. As Court says, people have just sold their business, entrepreneurs, or people who are just coming for personal development. So, so um, are on the side of thinking you might apply, and then we can have a conversation with you about whether AMP this year is, is right for you, maybe later on, or indeed another program from within the MIT exec ed suite. Um, but, but don't screen yourself out because actually there's lots of our most interesting people who come for personal development reasons. Um, Courtney, I was going to switch to talking about sort of what makes the AMP at MIT a little different. Um, mm. And um, but if there's another question, I, let me let me just talk for a little bit more and then we'll come back to uh, the question, if that's all right. So we get asked in these sessions quite a bit. Well, why? You know, there are many AMPs out there. There are other schools that are quite reputable. Um, what's the difference uh, that uh, uh, with this program? And I have some slides about that in just a second, but I just want to um, say some things that are sort of above the slides, above the detail that you'll see in a moment. The, when we talk to um, cohorts that have been here and who've been shopped around, here's what we hear. The, the first thing that attracts them to this is that the cohort itself is smaller, quite a bit smaller than the AMPs you might uh, be looking at elsewhere. So we have um, usually about 30 to 40 people in the room. And we've learned that that size is great for our learning methods and our approach. Um, other AMPs often have double uh, that number, sometimes even larger uh, than that. So this is small and intimate on purpose because we think that improves the learning and application. The mind and hand opportunities increase because of the intimacy of the group. Um, the second thing that's, again, over all the slides that you'll see in a moment is there's something about our learning methods, as I talked about our being started as an engineering school. We tend to avoid using classic business school cases, um, and we tend to focus much more uh, and orient ourselves more to working on your issues uh, so and your situations and the things that you're worried about. And so rather than seeing case discussions, rather than having you prepare your case discussion or analysis so that you can share it the next day, we don't do that. Um, we're much more likely to work on real problems live in the classroom. We have flat classrooms. Uh, so this is, again, part of our method is flat classrooms can be rearranged. It's, uh, we try to lower the hierarchy in the room. There's no pit. There is a professor, sure, but the professor's in there working just right alongside you. And so that's our whole mentality uh, and orientation to the learning methods. We think that works best for experienced executives. It's get your nose right up into reality, your own reality. And we try to design our content so that you can take it and begin to think about how it could be applied right away. So small, intimate cohort with uh, learning methods that are about application, immediate application. And then the third thing that people say about the little bit difference uh, about being at MIT is the ecosystem all around us. We're in a region, you can Google me and check me on this, but we're in a region called Kendall Square, uh, Cambridge, Kendall Square, Cambridge. And it's one of the most vibrant innovation ecosystems in the world. Uh, it's called the most innovative square mile by some people. Uh, there are other innovation centers in the world, but this one has its own flavor. It's just super vibrant. Uh, the coffee shop conversations around here are just like, unlike any others you could hear anywhere else in the world. So it's just going on all the time around us. And our goal, part of our goal is to get you out and in that mix and being knowing how to mix around in the MIT uh, ecosystem. So I wanted to say that before Court, I gave I you some more. I think we actually have a slide okay. on that, uh, just to give a picture of it. Yeah, uh, let's see. That's what the ecosystem is, Molly. Thank you. 
So we typically, there's the dome I was pointing to before. I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but that's sort of the red buildings are MIT and that sort of big gap there that you see right in the middle of that triangle sort of shape, that's where the dome is. We're down to the right in the corner there. And then what you see on the slide here is all the businesses that are right around, chock a block around the campus uh, that we get you out into. Um, so we meet uh, small business uh, people, we meet venture capital people, um, uh, we meet people from all different sectors that are gathered around MIT in part because they wanna be involved in research here or they wanna recruit talent from within MIT. So it's a really unusual setting uh, quite beautiful. Yeah, you might not notice there's a river down here and we get you out into the larger part of Boston as well. Hope I'm helping with a little bit about the difference. Will it help to swim with sharks? I'm not sure we're going to help you with that directly. Um, maybe with tough business competitors, we could help you with that. So um, just uh, before I, you know, I can answer any questions about the content, but here's a little bit more about why people choose to come to MIT's AMP. It's partly about the faculty. Lots of schools have eminent faculty, but again, there's something about the people that we have at Sloan who are teaching in this program. It's about their uh, commitment to the mind and hand, uh, their own research. Uh, Elspeth can tell you quite a bit about the work that she has done uh, in the realm of strategy and strategy implementation. One thing we haven't said so far is we give everybody who comes a one-on-one -on -one coach to help them figure out how do I show up more usefully in my situation in the future. And we base the coaching on some instruments that we use. Uh, DISC is a very common one in the world, but we also have an MIT specific leadership uh, feedback report that's 360. Um, and then we get set aside time in the program for you to work on your own issues and to help others who are here also work on their issues. And then I'll just say one more thing, and this is, comes back to my comment about learning methods. We like to use a wide variety of learning methods. Uh, so one of those is a business simulation where you run a company as a team, you run a company uh, and try to execute your strategy and make change happen, uh, et cetera. So what people notice about the classroom here is not only are we not doing case discussion very much, if at all, uh, but we use simulations, we go to the whiteboard, we do exercises, we, we build things. Um, that's all part of uh, the learning methods that we use. Let me pause there because now I've been talking a little bit about differentiation and why people choose to come. Um, I saw some comments here about location, location, location. Yes, that's part of it uh, for sure. It's, it's, it's just different here. There's just no getting around it. Um, and if you like this sort of vibrant, always on kind of uh, environment uh, and are looking at cutting edge, really, there's no other way to talk about it, but really new things that are coming out to make a difference in the world, uh, this is a good place to be. I saw a question that came in and I, I can't stop thinking about it. I love it. Um, perhaps it would be best to ask Molly, how do you classify the program that you've designed? Is it more hands-on or more conceptual or more strategic? if you'd like to take a yeah of course so uh, everything we do at mit we try to design as hands-on as possible um court may have the mit seal somewhere in this deck but um embedded in our dna is is hand in mind um so everything we do we don't want it to simply be a, a theoretical introduction to topics we want this to be um immediately applicable for you uh and so um part of part of that goal uh we approach in the way that we teach in the classroom um, and so rather than having you run this knowledge through a, a case that may be somewhat outdated, we want you to take the theories that we're approaching in classroom and, and run it through the lens of some uh, challenge that you're facing strategically in the workplace right now. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know if I've answered every every word you asked there, but generally, Court, yeah, feel well, free to hop what, in. Why don't I just build on that, Molly? Because um, I think a good example of that is the way that we teach strategy and culture, which are the two things that I Teach, largely teach on AMP. So the way we do that is we give you a strategy framework. And in fact, we give you um, a, a bit of, we teach a bit of that before you even come to class so that we can save the precious real estate of being on campus for application and discussion. 
Um, but we we say to you, look, here's the framework. Use that framework, apply that framework to your own organization. So draft your own answers to the strategy questions for your own firm. Then come to MIT and improve the quality of those answers. Now, some of that will be because of people you meet. Some of that will be because of challenge that you're given by your fellow students. Some of that will be because you've just met someone who does generative AI and that blows your mind. And so you realize that, oh my goodness, my 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 the answers that I came to campus with, wow, they need to be so much better. They could be clearer, more technology enabled. Um, you will learn a ton of things that will improve those answers, but it starts with the framework applied to your business. And I do think that is um, a, a just the most helpful way for experienced execs whose time is precious to bring back from AMP something that's meaningful and they can apply in real life. Uh, thanks, Courtney. So this is this is shows you the. I hope you can see a little bit, but this this whole five weeks is back to back to back is organized around the strategy development process that uh, that Elspeth teaches throughout these these five weeks at different points. And so that's the structure of the, the learning. And then we try to add uh, useful uh, frameworks, as Elspeth was saying, to help you then think about, well, is this part of my strategy? Do I have the capabilities I need to execute my strategy? What needs to be added? Um, do I have the organization that I need, the structure that I need? Uh, which profit pools or market segments are we really going to go for? And are those the right ones? All those kinds of things are dealt with throughout the five weeks. And then we add things in like innovation, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, uh, having difficult conversations, all things that we think that we cut, try to curate an experience that's for senior executives. Uh, one more thing, because uh, sometimes people say, well, I'm going to go to MIT and I'm going to learn best practices. And yeah, you'll learn some of those. And, and uh, there's many good practices, but we tend to resist that a little bit. It's like, this is what we think is good today. Um, but we also know that the, the world is just such a varied and complex place that you, if we only taught you practices, you really wouldn't be as effective as an, ex as an executive. Um, you need to learn principles, why the practices work, what's underneath the practices so that you're then better able to adjust them. The metaphor I use consistently is like a cook, someone who can prepare a recipe. That's a good thing to be. A cook who can follow a recipe is good. That's someone who can follow the practice. But a chef, someone who knows really how to do and, uh, the recipe and how to adapt it for particular situations, that's what we're hoping to help pe people become is better chefs as opposed to just better cooks. Someone who can take principles and practices and adapt them for their own immediate situation. Let's see, what else have we got for comments or questions here? Someone is wondering if there's residence or accommodations on campus. Can we talk yes, about I that? See detail a there. Yes, yes. Molly, you want to talk about that? Yeah, one? so we reserve you accommodations. Um, it's in a hotel, a three minute walk from our classroom. There's studio apartment style accommodations. Um, most of the things you need are taken care of there. A laundry credit, we, we get you a gym membership in MIT's facilities. Um, and then um, the, a, a lot of your meals will be with us in the classroom. So the, um, the accommodate the accommodation we take care of it's part of the fee just to be explicit about that um, and then most of the meals but not all we have right around the classroom we have our own executive dining room what you're really responsible for is getting to MIT and then we we you need to be able to, to take care of yourself on the weekends <laughs> so as long as you can do that and I think you've had some practice in that by this point uh, so that would be the only other expense to add on top of the cost of coming to uh, the program. And actually, just um, to follow up on that, Court, what amazes us every year is just how quickly people have got far more exciting weekend plans than us. Um, <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, I, you know, they'll come in on the first or the second Monday, rather, and they'll be, what did you do at the weekend? And I probably just slept. And they'll be like, oh, I did this, this and this with my six new best friends. So yeah, yeah it's um, it's an amazing place to live for five weeks. 
Thank you. Uh, Elspeth, uh, just see some other questions here. Is the program suitable for technology leaders? I, another one related to that is I've been working as a product uh, design uh, person. Let me just say a couple things about that. It's both of those could be appropriate for, a, uh, could make you an appropriate candidate for the AMP. So you should reach out to Molly and explore the, the possibilities. Uh, we've had some people who've had exactly those uh, roles. So I'm talking about the head of R&D uh, for a big um, uh, commuter airplane manufacturer. We've had CTOs from various software companies. Uh, we've had some people who have worked in product design for quite some time who can talk about DevOps and all those kinds of things until you you just ha would keel over. I mean, they're really detailed, but they want to broaden out into uh, yeah. more general management kinds of jobs. So that's those are all classic um, uh, types of participants uh, for us. Yeah, and I do think that's a good way to think of it is if you are coming from a what, what I sometimes call a vertical speciality, so either a function or a business line or you know, a subject matter expert in your organization, and maybe you wanna go up a level or across a level or broaden out, AMP was a, just a terrific way to do that because not only will you be exposed to a ton of strategy and culture co content, but also you'll meet other people who've had a very different background from you. We're very serious about curating the cohort in a way that adds value to everybody in the cohort. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, th I think that would be, you'd be a terrific part of that cohort. We obviously wouldn't have a cohort just, just of those people, but as part of the cohort, I think that would be, it, that, that all, that's always worked every single year. Yeah. There's another thing that goes along with some of the, you know, I'm like this, am I a good fit? We do some things to bond the cohort together that aren't really on this slide. Uh, so there's a team building component that's heavier in week one, where we're trying to help people learn about each other. And uh, there's many different activities that we do around the edges of the classroom to try to bond the group and help people understand each other and be helpful to each other. And so, uh, this, again, this is not typical of most AMPs uh, to have that kind of uh, dimension. Um, I'm seeing a question. I don't know if a PMP, what a PMP is. So, uh, uh, Lil, if you have a question about that, you might need to clarify what that is. Um, let's see. Any other comments I can address before I go back to the slides, perhaps? Courtney, have you noticed any question that we should talk about? Yeah, I actually have a question that, that brings us all the way back to the beginning. So, what is the application process like if I'm in this chat and I'm considering taking it, you know, taking on the AMP journey, um, how long would it take to fill it out? How much time should I dedicate to that? Is it an in-person interview? Can I do it on Zoom? You know, what is it, what's it like to apply? I kind of wanted to jump in on that. Yeah, I can Molly, hop in just there. unmuted. Go ahead, Molly. <laughs> um, our, our application process is by design quite light. Um, so you have four questions that we need you to answer that are really, um, so that we can get a sense of who you are and what challenges you're up against, um, what sorts of teams you're leading. Uh, we then ask for a CV or even just a, a link to your LinkedIn profile. Um, and from there, um, we'll review your materials and, and folks who look like a good fit on paper um, will invite you to have a conversation with us. Um, we find this to be the most efficient way to make sure the program is a good fit on both sides. Um, I'd say from the time you apply to the time you get a decision, uh, we like it to be as quick as 10 business days. So, so while we do have rolling dates for, for batches of application, we won't wait until one of those dates to get back to you. Um, we know people have to plan for this program very far out to make sure that they have those five weeks free mentally and physically. Um, so uh, it, you'll hear back from us uh, relatively quickly. That's wonderful. I'll make sure to um, put your email in the chat again if people have questions, but that's a great over overview of what kind of commitments I'd have to make to apply. It sounds like I can do it in one sitting. So that's wonderful. And Court, I'll pass it back to you to get back on the slides, but I was excited yeah. to share what that process is like for anyone on the chat considering it today. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a couple of questions here about, are we interacting with companies that are around MIT? The answer is yes, uh, that some of them will come to us. Some of them will go to C. Um, 
and we think that's an important part of the learning methods is talking to people who are like the participants who are wrestling with their the same problems uh, we also go to some places that you really don't get a chance to see anywhere else in the world so for we in the past we have gone to a place like the broad institute this is one of the places that uh figured out the genetic code and uh, now is developing clinical applications. You send in uh, human tissue, they do the DNA analysis. And then because of that, we're going to be enabling a future that's much more personalized uh, uh, medicine. And so they, it's a very fast moving area. It's the fat, it has the fastest clock speed of any sector I know about. It's the change is so incredible. Um, and yet they're able to manage uh, innovation and efficient operations because of some of the techniques that have been uh, developed here at the business school. So we, we really believe in that. And that's just one example of the kind of thing that we want to expose the participants to. Um, I see some more questions about ver various forms of the question about price and all that is available on the, the website. Um, it isn't inexpensive. Uh, I'll just say that a general statement about it. Uh, it's a serious commitment of money and time. And so you really, that's why we want to help you make a good choice. That's why we're doing this session to help people make an informed choice about the value that they can get uh, by coming to MIT and investing uh, what they invest. Um, uh, there's a question here about what's the difference between us and an MBA. An MBA, you have to pass a test to get in and a test to get out. Um, and you, it's a much longer time commitment, um, usually with an MBA. Most MBAs are, that I know about are usually any from a year to two years, depending upon the design and content. Uh, this is five weeks. And I will say one other thing that we haven't said so far, which is ultimately the test is, what are you going to do with what you're going to learn? And we'll be constantly pressing you about that while you're here. So that's the ultimate test, not whether you can you know, tick off a of boxes on a multiple choice test. That's not what we're doing, but you would do that for the, uh, an, an MBA, even here at MIT. Um, here, the test is what are you going to do? What, and what have you done? Uh, that's what the answer to the question, what have you done helps you join the cohort. And then what are you going to do is what helps you get out uh, and get helped after you leave uh, MIT. Trying to think what else I could show. Court, do you have any more um, details in the slides that we can um, talk about? Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking about um, the question here about AI. We talk about AI pretty much the last two years. We've talked about it, um, and generative AI uh, was something that we dealt with uh, this year with um, an eminent um, professor who has also been a serial entrepreneur in the machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence space. And so generative AI was yet something else as a part of that. And we had people practice uh, uh, using uh, generative AI. Um, so, uh, but that's, that's just one technology. There's many technologies that we've talked about and that we've helped people think about how to use blockchain being uh, one of them, uh, the genetic um, uh, and the uh, nano technologies are becoming much more present in most people's uh, commercial uh, lives. So we talk to the nano lab where they're looking at things that are less than one one hundredth the width of a human hair, uh, you know, so they're, they're we're talking about technology in all kinds of ways, is my point. And the question becomes, what can you do to marry technology, strategy, management, leadership? That's what we're trying to help people uh, with all those things, bringing them together in your particular setting, in your particular part of the world. But it's not only about AI and it's not only about technology. I hope you're hearing me on that. <laughs> Court, I'm seeing some questions about, you know, how we differentiate ourselves from from peer schools. Um, I, I'm happy to jump in on this a bit. Uh, I, I think one of our biggest differentiators uh, is the class size. Um, this is a very. I think I said program. this earlier, no? Yeah, you did. <laughs> I think some I people. Again. All right. Good. So uh, this is a program that's limited at 35. Um, it, we, we really feel it gives you the best opportunity to have face time with our faculty and to, to deeply get to know your cohort. We feel you'll learn as much 
from your peers in the program as you might in the faculty. Um, and then um, we also, uh, our approach to teaching and learning and the ecosystem we find ourselves in really um, impact the design of the course. Yeah, and I think I would just follow up on that because I, th I think the specific question was, how is this different from the one at Harvard Business School? So the big difference, um, oh, really? as I'm sure you know, all of you already know, is that Harvard Business School leads with cases. That's their main teaching methodology. So in other words, you read a case and then you discuss it. Whereas we lead with uh, with frameworks. Um, and honestly, I think that's a better way to educate. Because the problem with leading with a case is that it is inherently contextual. Um, and very often, even the cases that are brilliantly written don't always speak to the full dimensions of the context, the power that's in play. In other words, the stuff that happened before the case started and after the case started. So if you have a framework, you can then apply that framework to your own case rather than someone else's. Because I certainly in all of my experience of teaching, I taught at London Business School for five years. I've taught at MIT for five years. And prior to that, I had, quote unquote, a real job um, as a corporate strategist and an equity analyst. All of my experiences that the big mistake that over-reliance on cases makes is that you think you can just copy and paste what it told you to do in that one case into your organization, an organization with a different context, a different culture, a different way of doing things and quite possibly a different strategy. And so we believe that starting with the framework and then thinking about how that framework has played out in other places and therefore how that framework might play out in your shop, we think that's just a better philosophical, um, pedagogical way of, of communicate, like just getting to the, the essence of what's gonna make the most impactful difference in your business. Let's see, I'm looking for other, other I have questions. another question too about, you know, coming back to before AMP starts, um, if we wanna talk about that. I'm wondering besides shutting off my work phone and getting a dog sitter in my case, how can I best prepare myself for AMP before the program starts? What is What does pre-work look like? How do I best be prepared to come to campus and take part in the advanced management program? I'll start with that. There's some things that you can do and there's some things that we do to try to help you. So if you, before you um, uh, even apply, I would recommend just having a, um, a, a chat with the people that are your stakeholders, your, usually that's your manager, maybe some uh, an important client about what it might mean to go away for five weeks and to figure out, can you clear your calendar? Do you have a team that you can take uh, over for you while uh, you're gone? Maybe it's a less busy time of the year, that kind of thing. So that you do need to sort of have backup, have a backup plan um, so that you aren't called into every meeting and dealing with every problem that comes up. So that's partly on you. The other thing you need to think about is, can your family have you be away? Um, or do you need to bring your family with you and then agree with them that you're still not going to be around as much because you're going to be in class and meeting with the cohort, et cetera. But we do have people who come with their families and state have create their own living uh situation here uh in the states so it's partly it's why it's a long-term decision making process you need to clear it with your your company you need to clear it with your family friends all that that you need to create space to be fully here emotionally psychologically um dog sitter you're right courtney absolutely the um the part that we try to help you with and then uh, maybe molly wants to come in more on this the we do some sessions online in Zoom with the cohort once it's been selected. So after you've applied, been accepted, then the cohort gets together for uh, as many as three sessions where you meet the other members of the cohort. We give you some uh, learning, but also some guidance on data to gather, conversations to have about things like strategy, direction, um, innovation. And uh, so that when you arrive here at MIT, you've got relevant data with you. You've begun thinking already about your challenges, and then you can really hit the ground running while you're here. So we're, we're doing some things also to help you prepare, 
But the basics about clearing your calendar, clearing the space, having backup, that's on you to do. And we're, we're insistent on it because we've seen people try in the past to handle clients, to pr make presentations to their boards, to be available to their CEO. Um, and it, you know, one or two calls occasionally, fine. But if people don't know that you're at the AMP and they think you're still you're still on the case back at home, that it just doesn't work. And it, if you're constantly leaving the room to go and deal with these things, you you take everybody's uh, game down. Uh, so particularly because remember we're so applied in the room. So when one person leaves, it it just creates a ripple that we try to avoid creating. Yeah, and and that's particularly true because we will take every opportunity to have you into into small group or table discussions about how to apply every single framework that we are teaching you. So if so, if that group is suddenly down one, and by the way, we mix you up, so you will have worked intensely with everybody on the cohort for the duration of the five weeks. Um, but if if it, like the group is a small group, might might be three people, might be four people. So you being here physically and mentally, incredibly important. Yeah. And just to add one more thing um, about preparing yourself for your time on campus, we don't post on our website every single resource you might need, uh, but we are here to support you through the process. So if, if you being able to come to AMP, if that looks like you're coming with your family uh, and you need to figure out childcare, summer camps, uh, you know, family housing, whatever it is, um, just because we don't have it actively on our website doesn't mean we can't support you um, with the administrative process that will allow you to, to be with us here on campus. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions about that. I'm happy to chat about how we can kind of smooth that process for you. Right, well, yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, and Courtney, if you could put the slides up, I'm just conscious of the time and I'm thinking maybe there's one or two other slides that we would show, but then I wanna give it to Molly to wrap up again about the um, application process. Yeah, definitely. As I put those up, I'm thinking about the last question that we had about preparing yourself and maybe how you can convince your manager to let you go to MIT for five weeks. And I think this the one of the last slides here, the takeaways might help with that. Yeah. So these, uh, because of the diversity of the group, each person takes away something a little different. And so this is sort of a summary of the things that people say they've taken away uh, from being part of this uh, experience. So it, we mentioned skills and frameworks quite a bit during this call, but the uh, they also are taking away um, research, um, They've taken away a support group from the cohort. Um, they've got a, many, many perspectives on their challenge. Uh, again, this is multidimensional uh, learning with across multiple kinds of uh, topics. Um, so those are all part of what people take away. We've seen people who who have who say that the AMP helped them get promoted. Okay, great. We're glad to hear about that. Uh, we've heard people say, well, I started a new business because of this and either it worked or it didn't, but I learned a huge amount and I would never have had the courage to do that unless I'd come to the AMP uh, and seen what other people were doing and gotten some inspiration from that. So the, the, the specific takeaways that any one person might have could be quite uh, different. Uh, and we think that's, that's good. So um, the, the key thing to talk about with us if you apply and we interview you is sort of what you're hoping will happen in your life because you've taken the lessons, the practices, the principles from AMP and applied them. We're hoping to get into a conversation with you about that. Um, I think the rest of this pretty much uh, is straightforward, although we're happy to answer questions about things like being part of the Sloan Alumni Network or whatever uh, mm -hmm. else might be interesting to you. But I, what I'm trying to emphasize here is we are about delivering impact in the world and we want you to help you have impact in the world in whatever whatever that means for you. If that means getting promoted and then having a larger scope uh, for what you know how to lead, great. If it means starting a new business, great. If it means reshaping your part of the organization, great. All those are sort of the classic measures of impact um, that we uh, tend to hear about. 
And I can also just jump in and say that, you know, if you're looking for a physical one pager that you can pass off to a manager or a leader, uh, we do we do have um, documents like this. So once you're admitted to the program, if you need something to hand off um, in support of why why you should be out of the office for five weeks, but also why your your company should consider sponsoring you, that's a resource we do have for you. That's wonderful. It sounds great. And we'll make sure that people can reach out to you if they can't find that. Um, when they're in their application process. And we only have a, a few minutes left, so we'll keep looking at your questions. We can address them afterwards as well. I want to remind everyone that you're going to get the recording from today sent to your email if you missed anything or if you want to forward that to someone who might be interested. And I think we should all go around and, and say a, a, a closing remark on why we think you should come to AMP, maybe what a typical day at AMP might look like or something that... Um, you enjoyed from teaching court and Elspeth. I'll start. Uh, just, I just want to say I've been doing this now for 12 years at MIT. This is one of the most fun things I do. I don't think it's just fun for me. I think it's fun for participants too. So we've been talking a lot about serious things, skills, frameworks, et cetera. It's also just a super energizing experience because of the diversity because of the fact that people are leaning in, because it's a warm, intimate environment, all that is part of why I continue to do this. It's just super exciting to be a part of. Elspeth, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that, um, Court. I, I teach on a number of things at MIT, including the core leadership course uh, on the school's executive MBA degree program, teaching my own program on leading change, and, and also MIT Sloan's women's leadership program. Um, the thing I would say about, about um, AMP is that it creates a really unique, because it is five weeks, it creates, an um, um, I think, a unique um, cohort. Um, and, and it's that cohort that there's a bit of peer pressure, there's a bit of peer support, um, but, but that is special. And so uh, many of you will be tempted to come for shorter programs. Maybe they are more doable for you. And Molly and the team can can help you find, a, you know, if, if there's a program that's more salient for you. But AMP is special, um, largely for all of the kind of annoying reasons, like it's five <laughs> weeks back to back. It's really hard work, but it's exact like that's how you pay the price for achieving membership of an, an, what will be an astonishingly rich an experienced cohort that will help you for the rest of your career. It's as simple as that. So um, so I think that's why, for me, I always teach as much as I possibly can on AMP. <laughs> um, and, and for me, just to close, I just want to echo something that Elspeth already said earlier, which is um, don't count yourself out. We are looking to build a diverse group of people in this room. We want people who approach problem solving in different ways, who have different lived experiences. Um, and so if you're on the fence or if you're not sure if the program is a fit, that's what I'm here to help you figure out. Um, and, and usually the easiest way to do it is to schedule a call. Um, so you have my email address. You have um, our, our main website. Please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy, um, as Elspeth said, to, to figure out if this is a fit or to redirect you to other programs we have that might be a better fit for you at this point. Um, so please do be in touch if I can be helpful. Amazing. Thank you all so much. I, I was going to say the same thing. I think don't count yourself out and just apply and see where it goes. It might be the best thing that happened to you. So thank you, Elspeth and Court and Molly, for your time. And thank you, everyone on the call. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Courtney. Thanks, team. Bye-bye.